Critics are odd birds. Users might be even odder. Metacritic is a place of unpredictable reviews from both sides. Trying to guess either score is a madman's game. What's up, my little meat whackers? It's time for us to play a little game. We're going to stand strong and face both Davy and Goliath, attempting to guess the conclusions of both sides of a video game review. It's time to guess the Metacritic score. In order to guess a score, we're going to need a game to play. I've decided to pour through my Steam collection. Oh yes, lots of good choices here. See anything you like? I see it too. It's perfect. Crazy Taxi, a game regarded by many people as a classic. Nostalgia sure has been kind to this one, but how was it perceived when it released? A lot of us were nothing more than sprouts when we garnered most of our memories for this game. Was it worse than we remember? Does it still hold up really well? At the time, were critics ready for something this zany? Did some of them find big issues with it? Maybe finding it moderately violent or something? I mean, you're basically a, a madman from what I remember, cruising around the streets, not hitting people because the game won't let you, but we all know we came damn close. Look, I know some of you are too young to remember this title, maybe you barely even heard of it or not heard of it at all. Consider this like a lesson in gaming history or some shit. Now your boy hasn't done any research on Crazy Taxi yet. I picked this game on purpose because I haven't looked at the reviews. I am a big review guy, but it's been many years since I've even thought about this game. I'm going to play it and give it a review, making sure to take into consideration its release date. Once I gather my opinions, I will boldly guess the critic score and the user score using Metacritic. I know what you're thinking, Metacritic doesn't have the best reputation. Maybe it never even had a good reputation. I'm gonna take that into consideration too, with any title I do. Not just this one, because uh, I plan to do this again if it's fun. It should be fun. Enough of this jibber jabbing. Let's get dirty. So the console version came out in 2000. The arcade cabinet was in 1999. It wasn't just a simple port. They moved the game over, but they also added a new map and a new game mode. So I'm gonna be treating this like any other game from 2000, not from 1999. Not that that one year should make too much of a difference, but back then games were evolving quick and becoming better and better each year. Boy, do I wish that was still the case. The driving was a bit janky, but that's kind of be expected, and it wasn't really horrible or anything. I would say it was pretty solid overall, and probably really great for the time, but the stalling was really annoying and kind of brought back some trauma from when I was a kid. It wasn't as annoying then as it is now, but I do remember getting a little steamed every time my car wouldn't fucking move when I'm trying to fucking get this guy to his destination, or I'm about to run out of time and I drive past the destination. I guess maybe I've always been fucking dog shit at Crazy Taxi. Maybe I'm not the right guy for this, but I do remember loving the game. This is the, the lake. machine. Knows. This is the Stop yelling at me. No, it's not yelling. Also, the GPS sucks fat shit. I don't remember it being that bad, but it definitely doesn't work very well. You probably have an easier time just memorizing every area when it pops up and knowing where to go because that shit got me lost. Maybe I'm just getting used to it. Yeah, I love the timer going down as they're running to the car. Like, I don't even have time. Well, that's not good. Crazy Box is not a good mode. It requires you to know the button combos to be able to do anything really. And that's probably why I didn't remember it at all. It wasn't, it's not a memorable mode. There's only like 15 little mini games to use. And like I said, you need the button combos for every single one of them. How can I get to the 150? How the fuck do I drift? On how in the fucking world I'm supposed to drift. This feels comical, like it's fucking with me. These button combos can only be found in the game manual and not inside the game itself. Luckily, I was able to find a PDF that gave me the breakdown on all of these button combos. Although they didn't work very well in game anyways, even as an extreme gamer now, the shit just wasn't working well. Maybe it's the Steam port. I could not get the damn speed boost to work and eventually I just said, fuck it, I'm gonna go play another five minutes in arcade because it's infinitely better than this shit. This doesn't make any fucking sense. The arcade and original modes played well, and I had fun. I would say it was starting to get a little bit stale, but I don't remember playing this game for long sprints of time as a kid anyway, so...
the biggest thing I really remember is the soundtrack. The soundtrack was so badass. Unfortunately, they don't have the licenses for the music anymore, so Steam has a bunch of songs that I don't really know. I recognized one of them. It didn't have the classic Offspring and Bad Religion songs. Speaking of which, I thought there was like a bunch of songs in this game. I really did. There's only seven, which is fine. I, I just felt like there was more to this game. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1, which came out a year before, had 14 songs, and Pro Skater 2 had 15 songs. So having only seven from two different bands, it's kind of weird. Maybe this game only ever wanted to keep your attention for like 30 minutes at a time until you wanted to play something else or go outside, which that's a forbidden place now, so I don't really know what it's like out there. Every game I play now wants to make sure I sit tight in my seat and spend at least $40 every time I log on, the way we like it. Not trying to be too harsh here, but the 2000 lineup was actually really solid. You had shit like Counter-Strike, The Sims, fucking Majora's Mask, Spyro. I mean, just so many great games in there. Perfect Dark. Even Jet Set Radio, which is probably a very good comparison to this game. Jet Set Radio and Tony Hawk Pro Skater are probably the closest comparisons to the style and feel of this game. And I would say both of those games are great. Much better than this. And I played Jet Set Radio, like, that game holds more in my heart, but that game had shit like unlockables and everything. This game does not have that. This game has one cheat code. Okay, it's got a couple of cheat codes. There's like a teleporting cheat code. I didn't really fuck with that. I didn't care too much about that, but it's got a cheat code to get a bike. Like, just a bike. Left and right triggers in the car select, and you'll get the bike. I remember that as a kid. I remember having it, and I don't, I think we had to go on like cheatcodes.com, cheatcc, I want to say, or cheat planet, some shit like that. I wonder if cheat planet are any of those still up? I fucking doubt it. Cheat CC. Cheat Code Central. Yes. What the fuck? Celebrity Gamer Z spoke with Sal. Isn't this the guy? Yeah, Practical Jokers. What the hell? I don't know where I'd rank this on 2000 games tier list. Maybe in the top seven or eight, and it's probably at the tail end, but I still think it's a really good game overall, and it still plays really well. It kind of, well, okay, not really well. That's a bit of a stretch there, bud. What the fuck? I'm trying to put myself in the position of a long time ago. This game is regarded as a classic for a reason, but do we think all the critics might have felt that way? 2000 was definitely an interesting time. A lot of people spouting off and saying video games cause violence, yada yada. That stuff's still going on today. Dumb fuck Trumpians and shit will still claim that shit. Very graphic violence. It's not, it's not like cartoon. This looks like a real person's head exploding. So maybe the critics, you know, had something to say about that. I don't really know how much weight they had back then. I didn't give a shit what critics thought back then. I cared about what my friends had and what I had. It was all about the box art or the commercial. Reviewers did not make an impact in my life. Maybe they did for some people, like Nintendo Power and Game Informer crap like that. That was like 22 years ago. I would say people started taking game reviews a little bit more seriously when YouTube started getting more popular. Probably because, and I'm so sorry for saying this, Real gamers were the ones reviewing the games. At least most of them. People were uploading content and reviewing games because they loved it. Game reviewers back then, I don't even know if they played the full game or just a demo or a portion of the game. I haven't really looked into the way that worked. I'm imagining it was different for each media outlet. I can see with this game coming off the heels of shit like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and around the same time as Jet Set Radio that critics really thought gamers were gonna like it because of the aesthetic alone, the music, and the gameplay being pretty solid. I can see critics really suck in the metaphorical dick of Crazy Taxi. Uh, but I don't know if they sucked it too hard. I don't know if she was dry. Hmm. This is my official guess. I'm gonna say critics, according to Metacritic, which, again, is a very sketchy place to go for this, but where else am I supposed to go? I mean, I can't just look at the Steam reviews. I'm guessing that Metacritic will give me a, a nice 88 from the critics on average for this game. For the users, I'm gonna guess it's a little bit higher. Everybody looks back on it fondly. I don't know anybody who's ever really said anything negative about Crazy Taxi, and this includes people that may have changed their score over time. I think you could just do that on Metacritic. You could, you could fucking dump this game in the shitter right now if you wanted to. I'll say a little bit higher, 92. No, 93. I'm, I'm, my gut is telling me 93. My gut's smart. Okay, so right away we're seeing a bit of a problem. I'm not seeing Crazy Taxi for the Dreamcast. 
I could have sworn Metacritic has been around for a while now. 2001, that's not good, my dude. Obviously, I should have done a little bit of research. I just thought it was older than that. It's only 2001, wow, really. Um... Luckily, you know, they don't have the Dreamcast one, but luckily I did see a PC one. Maybe that'll be good. Hey, plot twists are pretty dope. I know you enjoy them. You you like plot twists, don't you? And, and not just because I keep fucking up. That's kind of who I am, you know? But we got it. We got a crazy taxi for PC right here. Let's... Oh, no. First review. There's no score yet. Damn, I done fucked this up. Considering I can't really look at Dreamcast and Metacritic reviews, I would say the closest thing to it is a PS2, which on the Wikipedia page, the scores are all pretty close to each other. And they about sold the same amount of units too, like a, in the million range. So we'll go with that. And I think I wasn't very, I wasn't very close at all, was I? Yeah. On the PS2, critics as an 80, users a 7.8. Man. I really thought a lot, but I thought this would be a lot higher. It's such a, it's such a legacy game. I mean, honestly, the first thing jumping out at me is the critics have a higher score of it than the user, which is kind of more normal now, but you'd think nostalgic reasons this would be different. Well, there you have it. This was my first guess the Metacritic score, and the game didn't even have a fucking Metacritic score. Ain't that just me, baby. Either way, we got to review an old ass game, I guess. My scores weren't very close at all. What would you give the game? Considering the user score goes from one to 10 and any decimal in between, where would you rate Crazy Taxi? You don't have to have played it right now. You can just go off of memory or the gameplay that you just saw. Where are you putting this shit right here? Is it a 10 out of 10 for you? For me, it's probably somewhere at like a seven. 7.5 out of 10. I think 7.5 out of 10 is probably very accurate. That's not a bad game, not an amazing game at all, and probably deserves its legacy. It's pretty dope. It's cool that at one point in time, there was a lot of games coming out with that kind of like punk rock aesthetic to it, which I latched onto pretty hard, and it's kind of made me the punk I am today. Bye. Wait there, we're not quite done yet. I went and did a little digging and found some reviews from both the critics and the users. So first, look at some critic reviews for Crazy Taxi on the PlayStation, not the Dreamcast. I'm sorry, sue me, I don't know. Game Revolution says, a mediocre port of what can already be considered an old Dreamcast game. But on the other hand, it's a port of a good fun game with the ever important gameplay still intact. Crazy Taxi on PS2 is still a gut blow of fun. 58. A gut, it's a whole gut blow, but it's it's got a 58. We don't like how the pesky pedestrians always manage to dodge your cab, but the graphics of the San Francisco-like city are amazingly detailed. Maxim Online, 60 out of 100. The feel of the arcade makes a successful transfer into an exciting and forever entertaining game that teaches everyone to respect those time-honored heroes, the cabbies. 95, Game Zone. Couldn't get a 10 out of 10. Bad game. We need the user scores. We need the, like, maybe this more about the reviews. Let's find some dumbass user reviews. Ratings for the time period it came out. Story, one. Gameplay, five. Graphics, six. Fun factor, seven. Invi well, this is so serious. Why am I reading this one? That's not an English. Did anyone else try to drive around like a normal human being and follow the rules of the road? I wish there was a free roam in this game, even though the map was fairly small. And we'll go, one, two, three. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I was expecting some stupid ass reviews, but all the reviews are pretty wholesome. This game does not seem like it's been touched by the toxic hand or any troll of any kind on Metacritic. So let's keep that preserved. Don't go on there and write a bunch of dumb shit because the moment's already gone and passed. I wish there was something funny for me to report back. Maybe the next game I do for this, I should do something a little bit later in time, not 22 years ago. Taxi! Taxi! I was also an idiot growing up. Fighting firecrackers, cherry bombs, stink bombs. Doing dumbass shit in between playing games like this. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Maybe I was a little dumbass. I do remember loving this game. 